Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I'm going to talk about dodging and burning with a purpose. I've talked about dodging and burning in the past, but I was simply just talking about dodging and burning. But today I want to talk about how to get professional results out of dodging and burning, uh, rather than just uh, showing you how to dodge and burn. So, I took this picture at the recent air show and really liked what I could pull out of this, but I knew that it was missing some things. Even after all of this post-processing that I've done, you can see here, I've done quite a bit of uh, curves adjustments, uh, some sharpening, some uh, right here we've got some, uh, some noise reduction and a little bit of hue saturation. But now I want to go into how I could have made, how I can make this image stand out just a little bit more and make certain elements of it stand out and push certain elements away. So what I'm going to do is start a new layer. Uh, I clicked on the new layer button down here that would give me a new layer in the layers palette. I'm going to press Shift F5 for fill. And I want to change that to 50% gray. So fill that with 50% gray. Now, don't freak out. This is normal. What we're going to do is we're going to go to overlay as our blending option on that 50% gray layer. What this is going to do is uh, it, would, it would normally uh, accent anything that comes in white. It would make bolder and anything that comes in black and make it bolder. But when we press overlay, oh, I accidentally pressed soft light. When we press overlay, that is gonna make, uh, since there is nothing black and there is nothing white, there's nothing for the layer to accentuate. So what we need to do is add that black and white. That's where dodging and burning comes in. I just dropped my pen. There, there it is, a little. I hate it when that happens. Anyway, so I'm gonna go over here to the uh, dodge and burn tool. Now, dodging will make an area lighter. Burning will make an area darker. So whichever tool you'd like to start with first. I typically like to start with my darks first and then work my lights in. Uh, that's up to you. Um, I'm gonna start with my darks and uh, bring in some of the areas that I want to be darker on here. I wanna set the darks to about 20% up here, about 20, let's go 25%, that sounds about good. 25% set to, um, let me just type that in, there we go, set to mid-tones, you see this is set to mid-tones over here. And now I'm just going to start, uh, I have a Wacom tablet, it makes it a little easier for me, so now I'm going to bring in some of these areas and just darken them up a little bit. Um, if you ever want to see what you're doing during the process of this uh, dodging and burning on another layer, you're not going to see it very well unless you turn this to normal. And this is what you're actually doing, you're painting darker areas on top of areas that uh, and didn't exist before that you want to make a little bit darker and bring forward a little bit more. So I really want to bring out the, these 202 somehow got lost in my whole process and I want to bring that out a little bit. So I'm just going to burn those areas and make them a little bit darker. And you know you just paint like this and Now, I really wanted that helmet to stand out because that, that was the reason why I took this picture was that helmet. I love the way the helmet was resting. It, uh, like the preparation for flight helmet look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the areas oh, around it behind, just push it farther behind by dodging or burning those areas in to make those areas darker so that it really pushes that helmet forward. I want that helmet to be the focal point. I don't really want the cockpit to be the focal point. I want the helmet to be the focal point. Now let's see what we have here. So that's what we've done so far. Did a little bit of painting on the on the top of the uh, aircraft to kind of pull those areas in. Um, I did actually paint on some of the highlighted areas there, but I like the look that's going on here. I like how it's cutting away some of those highlights to bring you in. So now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our uh, our dodge tool. But in order to do that, we don't have to go over here and click on our dodge tool. If at any time you're working on the burn tool, you can press the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC or Option on the Mac while you're working and hold it. And that will automatically bring you to the uh, opposite tool. So if you started with the burn tool uh, and you press Alt, it will bring you to the dodge tool. If you start with the dodge tool, you know, the vice versa will happen. So now I'm, I'm gonna dodge this helmet and really kind of pull that helmet out. I want that helmet to start standing out a little bit more. So when I release Alt, it's now gonna be burning again. So now I'm gonna burn some more of that area around that helmet in so that, that helmet really starts to stand out. The great thing about working with a Wacom tablet is, uh, I don't even know if I say that word right. I should, I should go to like a, a Photoshop dictionary for 
Wacom tablet, Wacom tablet, I don't know however they say it. Um, but I really want to push a lot of that stuff away and start bringing those highlights out a little bit more in that helmet. So I got a little overzealous with this area right here on the helmet, and that's not a big deal. I can just go ahead and dodge that area again, or burn that area again, sorry, and kind of bring some of that back so it doesn't look too, too blown out. Now, another thing, you know, vignettes are a big thing these days, and you can actually get a pretty creative vignette by dodging and burning if you uh, burn that vignette in, as opposed to making a lens vignette. You can make your own custom creative vignette with brushes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my brush size a little bit larger. If at any time you want to make your brush size larger or smaller, you don't have to uh, right click or click the this the button on 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 your uh, pen to make the the size larger and smaller. You can actually just click on the brackets. You can right click the bracket and that makes that brush bigger and you can left click the bracket and that makes that brush smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and make a pretty pretty large size size brush here and I'm going to keep my tones at, at about 25% uh, exposure and I'm just going to start burning in uh, areas that I want to see turn into a vignette to kind of pull you into that area. See how I'm starting to get a little bit stronger here. Let's, let's hike this up a little bit, move it a little bit faster. So here we're just getting a little creative vignette going on. And if it's not looking so hot in the sky, again, just you can go back to the uh, the dodge tool and dodge out the area that you just burned in. And if things are starting to get a little too red over here, um, it's not a problem. You can fix it one of two ways. You can go back and you can uh, dodge that area and pull that area back in or if you liked how dark it was you could uh, lower the saturation and just the reds on just that area so let's go ahead and show you what that would do so what I can do is just add a new saturation layer not a layer mask a new saturation layer and I can go to red and I can just lighten up that red area and then Shift F5 to fill that layer mask with black. Uh, it's not working for some reason. Uh, it does that every once in a while to me. I don't know if it happens to anyone else. Just go to Edit Fill if that doesn't work, or Shift F5 and press uh, black. And then paint white in the area that you want to bring back. So I'm going to press X to get my default brush back to white. And If I, it would help if I'm on the brush. See, I was on the uh, the wrong tool. Happens all the time too. And just paint that out. So I can I can keep the darkness and not get that uh, that bad red that's happening in the burning process. Because when you burn it, you're not just adding a little bit of darkness to it. You're actually burning the colors around it to to make them stronger and make them more punchy as well. So let's see what we have here. That's what we've just edited. That's what we've just done. So we've brought that helmet out. We've bring, made that helmet a little bit darker, um, or a little bit lighter to bring it out, bring it forward. Now let's go ahead and uh, burn a little bit of the cockpit up here as well, because that's really kind of distracting from the uh, the helmet there with the the bright brightness going on. So while this might be time consuming, you can really see that uh, that you can get really deep in there with uh, with dodging and burning, and really start to bring some areas back that might have you might have lost either in the tone mapping process or and even if you don't do any HDR tone mapping, that's fine. You can still use dodging and burning on a non HDR image. And one last thing I want to show you is that because this is a layer, we can still use it as a layer mask. So as a layer mask, we can still go in. And you see, I went a little overboard on the sides with that brush. So instead of uh, dodging back in or burning back in, I can just go ahead and paint those away on a layer mask with the color black. So right now my defaults are set to black and white. If I press X that will switch between the two of them so I can paint that area in with black and pull that area back that I added a little bit too much burn to. So there you have it, that's dodging and burning with a purpose, really bringing out your focal point. Again, this is EverydayHDR.com, and I'm Blake Rudis. Have a great weekend, and get into some dodging and burning.